habits are a big part of who we are. What we do habitually makes up much of what we do entirely. In fact, it's estimated that up to 70% of our waking behavior is made up of habitual behavior. And of course, I understand that it's the journey, not the destination, but let's face it, for a lot of us, goals and habits are about achieving some sort of destination. One thing that you've probably heard over and over about habit formation is not true. What I'm referring to is this idea that if you are very specific about exactly when you're going to perform a particular habit, that you are more likely to perform that habit. And while that is true in the short term, it is not true in the long term. And the reason for that is that our nervous system tends to generate particular kinds of behaviors based not on time, but on our state meaning what level of activation is taking place in our brain and body, how much focus we happen to have, how fatigued we are, how energized we are. So this is a key distinction. A lot of habit formation has to do with being in the right state of mind and being able to control your state of body and mind. The goal of any habit that we want to form is to get into what's called automaticity. Automaticity is fancy language for the neural circuits can perform it automatically. Just one mental exercise of thinking through what are the sequence of steps required in order to perform this habit from start to finish can shift the likelihood of being able to perform that habit from unlikely or moderately likely to very likely over time. So this procedural stepping through of the steps of the recipe or the series of action steps that are involved in sitting down to study and writing for an hour or generating exercise, whatever it is, the habit that you're trying to learn when you're doing that exercise, it's not as if your nervous system thinks you're actually performing the behavior. Your nervous system isn't stupid. It's actually a lot smarter than that. It knows the difference between a thought and an action. But when you do that, it sets in motion the same neurons that are going to be required for the execution of that habit. And so when you actually show up to perform that habit, it's as if the dominoes fall more easily. It's, it's a um, lower threshold, as we say, in order to get the habit to perform. And in fact, moving that particular habit around somewhat randomly can actually be beneficial to you because actually moving it from one time a day to the other is that context independence that we're re we really are seeking. By being able to do the same thing that we want to do regardless of time of day or circumstances, that's how we know that we've achieved a real habit formation. That's how we know that the habit has been moved into certain components of our neural circuitry that just allow us to do it what seems like reflexively. Now, some of you might be saying, well, wait, this is all self-talk. This is just positive self-talk, but it's not positive self-talk. It's not saying, uh, you know, I feel so great about doing something that I actually hate. You can't lie to yourself or you're welcome to lie to yourself, but all the literature basically of mindset speaks to the fact that when you lie to yourself, you know you're lying and you actually set up the opposite of a reward system. So you have to be brutally honest with yourself that for instance, I don't like initiating this cardiovascular exercise, but I do like the fact that I've done it after I've done it. So what you are doing is you are applying reward prediction error to the entire sequence of things that's involved in getting into the habit execution, getting through the habit execution and getting out of the habit execution. And for those of you that are thinking, well, this is just a psychological trick. You know, you've kind of, this is sort of like lying to yourself. It's not because you're not actually contradicting the fact that some of this is unpleasant. What you're doing is you're taking this entire series of events, what I'm calling this kind of time envelope, and you're associating it with a particular reward that comes later. So here's the idea. You set out these six things that you would like to learn or that you would like to acquire in your life, these habits. You only expect that you're going to perform four or five each day. You do that for 21 days. Again, if you miss a day, you just hop right back on the next day. However, you should think about the functional units within this 21 day period as two days. You're going to try and nail four to five of these things for two days. If you happen to get all six, great, but that's not necessarily required. So you can do it for two days, then reset two days, then reset two days. And then in the next 21 days, you're not trying to acquire any new habits. You're not going to throw in six more habits that you want to learn. You're simply going to assess how well, how deeply you've rewired your nervous system to be able to perform those six habits of the previous 21 days. This is extremely useful, I believe, because it will allow you to assess whether or not you can indeed make room, if you even have room, I should say, for more habits. After 21 days, you stop engaging in this 21 day, deliberate four to five things per day type schedule. And you simply go into autopilot. You ask yourself how many of those particular habits that I was deliberately trying to learn in the previous 21 days are 
automatically incorporated into my schedule? How many of them am I naturally doing? In other words, every 21 days, you don't update and start adding new habits. You simply try and maintain the ones that you built in that first 21 days. It turns out that this approach to forming habits is based not so much on the specific habits that you're trying to form, but the habit of performing habits. Listen, you don't want to do anything or engage in a routine in any way that you can't keep up consistently for at least five and ideally six days per week. Every four or five years, you might have to update that, but you need to decide what you can do consistently, what you can do every day or at least six days a week or five days a week. And in doing so, it will make it far more likely that you'll be able to regularly engage in these habits and activities over a long period of time.